Hey family, what's up? This is Coach Cookie, your life and relationship coach. Hope everyone is doing well today. Hope you're feeling blessed. If this is your first time listening in, thank you so much for joining me today. If you like what you hear, please give the podcast a like, comment, and don't forget to share with your family and friends. To my regular listeners out there, welcome back. And I want you to know that you're greatly appreciated. Here at Rising Higher, I'm going to give you some snippets for success to not only help you to survive, but to help you thrive. Now, in today's episode, we're going to talk about the mindset of the narcissist. But before we do that, let's talk about the high points from last week's episode called Stop Giving All Your Power Away. Now, in this episode, I gave a few examples of society and generational beliefs that we experienced in our childhood that continued in our adulthood. Now, these beliefs have us brainwashed to believe that it's not healthy or it's selfish to have our own personal power to pursue our own dreams or our own preferences in life. This is one of the main reasons why so many people are made to feel guilty. So as a result, we're easily manipulated to give over all our power in order to be controlled by other people such as the narcissist. If this episode sounds like something you want to learn more about, check out the entire episode. Again, it's called Stop Giving All Your Power Away. Now, for all my parents who had parents or other adults who were narcissists when you were a child, I want to remind you all today that you need to put in the work so your child won't go through the same struggles that you went through as an adult. Let me take a few minutes on Cookie's commentary to talk about this today because this has been coming up a lot in my coaching sessions with my clients. Parents, I need for you to think for a minute and really understand that the main reason why we attract toxic people is because as a child, we were emotionally detached from our feelings. This happened because our parents or the adults in our lives ignored our emotions. This is just a quick message to remind my parents that you want to make sure not to repeat the same cycle with your child that you went through as a child. So as a parent, remember, your job is to nurture, protect, guide, and guide your children. It's important to be sensitive and responsive uh, to your children in order to help build a positive, healthy a relationship with them so they won't feel rejected or ignored. Now, what happens if the child feels rejected or ignored is that it will result in emotional outbursts because they feel alone and don't know how to express their feelings. So as adults, they aren't able to cope with daily challenges. Now, I know that it can be tough to respond with sensitivity during tantrums, arguments, or other challenging times with kids. Parents don't get upset and respond by being irritable or aggressive yourself because children are going to mimic that behavior. And if they mimic that behavior, the negative cycle then continues. Keep in mind that when your child has tantrums or outbursts, this is only because they have learned that behavior from you. You probably didn't realize it at that time, but it may take some time to change that behavior. On the other hand, those children who create a strong emotional bond with their parents feel safe to explore, learn, and relate to their parents. So as adults, those children are able to cope with daily challenges. Parents, it's important to understand that your child needs your attention and wants your recognition. Remember to communicate to your child and let them know that they're valuable, that they're important, that you care about them, and that you love them. For older children, let them know that you're committed to building a stronger relationship with them and helping them be successful and that you're on their side and you have their back. When you engage with your child in a positive manner, you're building their self-esteem, confidence, and they will learn self-control. This will set a positive path where they will develop coping skills uh, to help them with problem solving not only as a child but it will continue in their adulthood if this is something that you struggle with when it comes to dealing with your child we may need to talk go to my calendar on my website risinghigherlife.com and schedule a free one-on-one consultation to determine if you could benefit from coaching okay now today on keeping it real i got a question from connie and she says hey coach cookie i really enjoy your show and it has been 
truly it has truly helped me during my healing journey. As I am going through this journey, I realize that I'm still attracting people who are not honest. They're not respectful and they have no integrity. I want to know what gives and why do I keep attracting these type of people? I really need your help because I want to be able to attract a new circle of friends. This is really important. So let's take a few minutes and talk about this. Okay. This is a good question. Believe it or not, but it's very common to feel this way, especially when you have been hurt from narcissistic abuse. So you want to be careful when you get back out in the community to attract new friends or even get into a relationship because you want to attract the right type of people. We don't want to attract the narcissist over again. So this is very important. Let me take some time to express what honesty, integrity, and respect looks like to me, just so I can make sure that we're all on the same page. Okay? So let's think about this. Dishonest people are argumentative and will raise their voices and get loud while trying to defend themselves as a way to establish power over the situation when they get caught in a lie, when you ask them a question. When an honest person is questioned about something, when they reply, their tone of voice is calm, consistent. This is because they're not, uh, there's no way possible that they will be found out about because there's nothing to hide. So they don't mind having an adult conversation with you about whatever it is that you're questioning them, questioning them about and whatever it is that you want to talk about. If you have a friend who's there when you need them the most, you can believe in their, you know, that they're there no matter what. This is the kind of person that you can believe in their integrity. And if they can't be there, they will give an honest and valid reason why. They are not interested in being popular. They're not interested in being the most attracted, the most celebrated, or uh, they, they're not worried about winning the admiration of the masses. Honest people are down to earth and they do good not to get leverage, but they do good for self-worth or self-growth. Honest people make great friends because they're not only dependable, but upfront as well. Uh, they would rather confront you face to face about an issue rather than gossiping about the situation behind your back. Honest people are not interested in catering to your feelings. They rather tell you a truth that hurts than let you believe a lie that makes you feel good about yourself. Now, everyone makes mistakes, but what says what sets honest people apart is their willingness to take responsibility and apologize when they mess up. Now, you have probably encountered some people who uh, are bad about saying, I'm sorry, and owning up to their mistakes. They will make excuses or apologize that you experienced negative feelings about what was said or done, but they will not admit that they did something or said something wrong. You know, so honest people are different. Those with integrity seek the truth, even if the truth exposes them for doing something wrong. Um, they will swallow their pride and their ego for the sake of an authentic and sincere apology. Now, with all these thoughts in mind, to my girl Connie, who had this great question, and hopefully you have taken some time to meditate about what I'm saying today, I need for you to take these few thoughts that I provided you and make a few of your own as to what respect, honesty, and integrity looks like to you. Write it down on a piece of paper and then ask yourself if that is who you truly are. Now, remember, none of us are perfect, but we all have to remember that we attract who we are. It's important for you to become your own best friend. You need to become your own best friend first in order for you to cultivate these positive behaviors so you can start to attract these kind of people in your life. In order for you to attract what you want in a friend, you need to become what you want to attract. In other words, make sure what you want to attract, that's what you bring to the table. Now, this is not only true for friendships, but it's also true in your romantic relationships as well. And Connie, I hope this is able to help you out a lot to make you think about what it is that you need to do. If this is something that you are struggling with or any of my listeners are struggling with, we may need to talk. Go to my website and schedule a free one-hour consultation to see if you could benefit from one-on-one -on -one coaching. If anyone has a question that you would like for me to answer, please go to my email 
at heycoachcookie at gmail.com. And I would be happy to answer any questions or any ideas for a show that you may have. Just remember, when I answer your questions, be ready because I'm going to bring it raw and I'm going to keep it real. Now, let's get into today's topic. Now, you won't guess this, but narcissistic abusers, they have a dirty little secret that they don't want you to know. In fact, they find it so shameful that most of them won't admit it to themselves. They hide this secret behind their abuse and their arrogance. Yes, child. People are fooled by the narcissist's bold persona and they become confused by their intimidating words and shamed by their aggression. They don't realize that the narcissist's personality is a mask and that their behavior is just a manufactured smoke and mirror game used as a defense to hide a scared, insecure child inside. Yes, you guessed it. The narcissist's secret is that they feel insecure and they are needy. This is why at all costs they need to feel powerful and in control. Once you realize this, it explains their entire personality and abuse. So to protect yourself, let's go over the mindset of a narcissist. Narcissists must control other people and their environment, including one's beliefs, feelings, and actions, so they will feel safe. They demand, belittle, or manipulate you to raise themselves and put you down. Their goal is to make you feel the way they feel inside. Yes, it's true. Everything that the narcissist does to hurt you is really how the narcissist feels about themselves and how they were treated as a child. Now, have you noticed that the narcissist has to brag, exaggerate, and fantasize about their greatness? They act special, they act entitled, they are arrogant, and want to associate with the best and most expensive or well-known products and people. All of these behaviors are methods to raise themselves up to feel less insecure and ashamed of feeling weak and inadequate. If they're the best, even by association or through buying symbols of luxury, they don't have to feel small and insignificant. Such behavior also means that they must believe that they're better than you and anyone else. Even if one person excels or is better or better at something, they must surpass that person. If they're not on top, in their minds, they're inadequate or they're a failure. Their insecurity also explains why they're super sensitive to any type of criticism If you disagree, you must be wrong because they always have to be right. Because their self-doubt is so great, they need constant affirmation, attention, praise, and loyalty to validate that they are the greatest. Which we all know this is their narcissistic supply and that they need it consistently because they are so insecure. In the long run, this temporary relief doesn't stick or mean anything because inside they're still shameful. And from this shame, the narcissist cannot accept any responsibility for their words or actions because they are afraid of being judged. They can't admit to any faults or mistakes. In their world, things are either good or bad, black or white, success or failure. Any error renders them as being bad or a failure and unlovable because they already feel shame and insecurity. Think of it like a child that's in trouble. Their first defense is denial, which can include lying. Their next defense is to blame you, their boss, the system, or other groups, anyone but themselves. The facts are irrelevant and you basically waste your time arguing with them. They may even say that you caused them to do something. Now, after denial, the final thing we can't forget is projection, which is their favorite defense. Rather than feeling weak, inferior, unimportant, or any other negative trait, they accuse you and others of being weak, too sensitive, inferior, uh, insignificant, or whatever else they want, they don't want to feel about themselves. With projection, They're trying to rid themselves of that dirty little secret and make you and other people 
the needy ones with all the problems, not them. Now, this topic had a little bit of a twist to it because a lot of people don't realize that the narcissist plays these mind games to get the focus off of them to make it look like you are the one with the problem. But in reality, the narcissist is the one who is weak and needy. I hope and I pray that something on today's show resonated with you. If you had too much of the mind games that the narcissist played to the point where it has you depressed or you can't focus on your daily activities, we may need to talk. Go to my website, risinghigherlife.com. Make an appointment for a one-hour free consultation to find out if you could benefit from one-on-one coaching. If no one has told you guys today, I love each and every one of you, and I'm sending you all a big hug. This is Coach Cookie reminding you to love yourself first as we rise higher together. Be blessed, and I'll talk to you soon.